Today we'll be doing a Tay Crowder film breakdown, the linebacker out of Georgia. He was the final pick in this year's draft, a former running back, so that'll be interesting to look at as well. Um, I just want to address this. You guys are probably wondering why we're doing Giants videos here once again. So yesterday I left Empire Sports Media after four months of being there, working for Fireside Giants specifically. It was a really good channel. We had about you know 3,500 subs. We got to talk to some NFL players. A lot of cool stuff was happening over there. But um, at the end of the day, it just wasn't for me. I just was not ready for that yet. Um, it turned into more of a job and an obligation. I mean, I love making YouTube videos for fun, and that's kind of how I looked at it as, as kind of like a hobby and doing it for fun. That turned into a job, and I, I should have realized that I was being paid to make videos over there. And, um, you know, at some points, I felt like I wasn't putting out enough, and I kind of felt guilty about it. And I kind of just, you know, I just wanted that weight off my chest. I just wanted to do things my way and be my own boss once again. Um, not to say Alex was a bad boss. He's an awesome guy. I, I, I'm going to miss working with those guys for sure, and I'm sure we'll do videos with them in the future. But, um, you know, just being all the time, I just want to do things my way, you know. So that's, I think I'll be more happy that way. I, I did miss doing things on this channel more because I was able to make my own schedule and make videos whenever I wanted to and not, you know, feel bad about it. So that's pretty much why I'm back. Just, you know, long story short, I have nothing bad to say about this, guys. I really hope you guys continue to watch their channel over there and, uh, you know, watch Fireside Giants because they offer some good insight as well. I hope you guys view both channels. That would be really cool. Um, but, yeah, it was a really cool experience, so I, I thank them for that. But for me, it just wasn't working out right now. But uh, I do thank them for the opportunity. So with that being said, let's get into the Tate Crowder film breakdown. So here's the first play. It's just a simple crosser to Cole Komet, who was a second-round pick, I believe. And wasn't a big fan of the, you know, stopping power, I guess you can call it on this play, because Crowder meets him at, you know, the 25-yard line, and then Cole Komet gets all the way to, like, the 31, so, you know, this should not have gone for six more yards, but at least at the end of the day, he did make the tackle. Uh, let's see how he did in the man coverage here, so I don't think it was too bad. There's not too much you can do on this play. You can obviously try to undercut it here and get in front of him, but that's pretty tough to do, so he is tried for stride. Cole Komet's not like a speed demon or anything like that. He's kind of like Jason Whitney. He's a tough guy to bring down he really does not get brought down too much honestly it takes the whole team as you can see here but um it wasn't the worst thing in the world i do think that tay crowder has a lot of coverage potential and this you know wasn't his best showing because of the tackle because it went for another six yards or so but outside of that wasn't that bad of a play he sticks with him stride for stride and then you know at the end of the day didn't make the tackle so that's not the worst rep in the world so on this play it looks like george is in like a 4-2-5 defense here which i guess is pretty rare but i did see them do it a few times actually so i guess it's a georgia thing but um, he's the same linebacker right here. We have this linebacker in the middle. So I, I'm pretty sure this was Tay Crowder's responsibility to stick with uh, Cole Komet. They run like an RPO, I think it is, basically, or just a play action. And uh, they leave him wide open. I do think this was Tay Crowder's responsibility. So if that's the case, then that's probably not a good look. It, it could have been the middle linebacker, but I think most in most cases the same linebacker is usually... Uh, the guy in coverage there, so that's not a good look there for Tay Crowder, if that was indeed his responsibility. You can see both linebackers for sure had their eyes in the backfield here and fell for this uh, you know, this run fake here, but uh, Cole Komet left wide open, so definitely not a good play for those guys. I mean, hopefully for the Giants' sake, that was in the middle linebacker, but I do think in most cases the Sam linebacker is supposed to take the uh, tight end in that instance, so that was unfortunate to see. So when I went back and watched, I would say the play recognition for Crowder was pretty inconsistent and up and down, but this was a great play right here. So Crowder's here with the white sleeves on at linebacker. This is a screen pass to the right, so the running back's just going to go over here, and the offensive line follows him, and Tay Crowder blows up this play for like negative two yards. Just a uh, fantastic play by him. So we'll see. I mean, before the offensive line even turns around right here, I mean, this is when the offensive line starts to engage in their blocks, and he was supposed to be blocked there by number 69. You know, doesn't even turn his head, really, at this point. He turns his head, like, right about here, and Crowder is already right here. So he is just in a fantastic position to blow up this play. As long as he makes this tackle, he will be fine. He did go a bit high on the tackle, but he got the job done. So that is amazing right there. If he can have play recognition like that, then that is a starting worthy you know, linebacker in the NFL. But as I said before, there were plays where the, um, the play recognition was kind of concerning. I'm sure we'll go over those later, but this was definitely a positive one out of Tate Crowder. So Crowder probably won't get in the stat sheet for this unless they were generous and gave him a combined 
tackle, but he does a great job of controlling this whole play. So he's right here, once again, white sleeves, and the running back's going to try and go to the outside here, but Tay Crowder meets him in that hole and just takes away the outside and makes the running back go towards the inside. And that's basically what you're supposed to do in his responsibility right there. You want to make the running back go back inside and kind of deal with those big guys, the defensive tackles and whatnot. So Crowder right here, if he wasn't in this spot, if Crowder attacked the middle here and tried to go through like the nose tackle area and try and go through like the B gap, I would say, then this probably results in a pretty big game for the running back on the outside. You see, this block was going to be made. He had another wide receiver, I believe, right here ready to make a block downfield. So this would have been a pretty big gain on the outside, but Crowder had the recognition to kind of take away this out side zone right here and make him go back inside so he won't get credit for this play but when you watch it on tape I think he does a really good job of kind of directing the running back where he wants him to go he did a great job of forcing him inside and because of that it was you know a play that went for negative one yards so Crowder's right here they're going to be in zone defense here he does a great job of reading the quarterback's eyes and meeting this slot receiver Right at the point of attack. And I think somehow he made this catch. It looked like it was intercepted, honestly. You could see some of the defenders pointing the other way. But I think somehow this was caught. But for Tate Crowder, this is great recognition once again. So he could have, you know, basically fell for a route that was going to go to Komet behind him. But he read the quarterback's eyes. And that's the benefit of playing his own defense. You can watch the quarterback's eyes the whole time, basically. So right here, he's watching the quarterback's eyes. You see this receiver coming underneath. And basically, he just attacks that very nicely. And right there, meets him at the right time, and I guess somehow caught that ball, but I think the recognition there was fantastic. He hits him pretty hard. I think most cases that's going to fall incomplete, but that is a fantastic catch right there. But I think based on the recognition and stuff, that is a great play by Crowder. So this play for Crowder I was not a big fan of. Here he is right here. This is a screen pass. This is going to go to the slot receiver. And uh, I wasn't a big fan of it because he kind of absorbs the block and c probably could have been more aggressive on pursuing, uh, pursuing that ball. So right about here, when you see the quarterback turn his head, I kind of wish he made a jump on this route and, and really just went after this receiver. But, you know, you see him pop out here. He has one blocker. I think it's the tight end. Um, and then you have Tay Crowder, who's unblocked. So at this point, it's going to take the lineman a decent amount of time to get out here and make that block. And I wish Crowder was able to kind of see this developing and make a play. So unfortunately, he waits on it, kind of hesitates. And by the end of it, he's basically absorbing blocks from two giant offensive linemen right there. And unfortunately, gets taken out of the play. So I do think that was a play there. If he had better play recognition overall, he probably could have blown this play up for a negative play or probably an incomplete pass. But he absorbs the the blocks and just was not quick enough and therefore Notre Dame gets like a decent I don't know seven eight yard gain out of this play so this is probably a play that could have been blown up for nothing but unfortunately they picked up a solid amount of yardage on that play so Georgia is in zone defense and Crowder's going to be responsible for kind of the area he's standing in I mean pretty much around here and this is a tough play it's going to it takes so much discipline to make this play work if you're a, a linebacker you see him there he kind of chases the quarterback who he thought was going to take off on the run and then found an open commit so I, I got to give him credit he does a good job of reading the route here he doesn't cheat too far inside he kind of just you know sticks with commit the whole time does a good job of taking away what would have been like a five yard gain on the pass and the quarterback is out here running you know run, running around to his right and you see Crowder kind of takes off early he's still behind the line of scrimmage so this is just you know you have to know where the line of scrimmage is and you know the amount of discipline it takes to make this play and make it work as a linebacker is insane so I can't really get on him too much for it but I think they did a good job covering the route, but just kind of uh, took off too early to pursue the uh, quarterback who makes a smart decision to just dump it off to his tight end for a 7, 8, 9 yard gain. So now we're on to a 2019 game against Vanderbilt, and this is, uh, I think this is J.R. Reed, the safety, so don't pay attention to him, but this is a video about him, but Tate Crowder was on the field, so it's still effective. So Crowder's right here. I believe this is a swing pass to the right to the running back, and Crowder kind of just misses the tackle here. Goes a bit too high and was a bit off balance on it, so it only went for a one yard game. But you know, if this was him in a one on one situation, this probably would have been a missed tackle. So he over pursues a bit. I think we saw this in a similar play with Darnay Holmes, and I did it on the other channel. He kind of over pursued on a similar play like this. And this running back stops on the dime, and you have um, Tay Crowder with all his momentum going to his left, and the running back just cuts back to his left, and it, it's tough. It's very tough. He gets him high, obviously, to, um, you know, on the shoulders and the helmet even, doesn't get any of his waist or legs, and you know because of that, he's able to slip out of that tackle. Probably picked up about two yards on that play, so I can't get on Crowder too much because it wasn't a big game, but you know if this was an open field situation where he had to make that tackle, that would have been an unfortunate miss. 
So in the first clip we went over, I went over a term called stopping power, which some people, you know, define as, you know, how powerful of a tackler are you? Do guys get extra yards once they engage in your tackle? And this is an instance where it's not so good for Crowder. It should have been like a two-yard game, but you see the running back drags him for about five more yards here. So Crowder is similar play. He's right here, I believe. This is a swing pass to the right once again. And Crowder meets him at about the 34-yard line, I'd say, right about right here. So once again, he doesn't get too low. He seems like he's tackling the shoulders once again. The running back definitely has more leverage here, and Crowder probably should have got lower on this tackle. But, you know, this is a play that probably should not have gone beyond the 35-yard line if he had good stopping power. But uh, you see the running back drags Crowder all the way to about the 40-yard line. So an extra five yards on that play. So that's not something I was in love with. But if he gets lower and fixes the tackling technique, then that's something that we could take away for sure so I hope the Giants and the coaches do fix that because there's a lot of potential here uh, I like how he got out here in time and could have made this play for a two yard gain instead it went for like seven but at the end of the day just has to work on the tackling technique and I think everything will be all right Here's Crowder in that Sam linebacker spot once again. There's a really great job of just getting off the block from the right tackle here and making this stop. I mean, he had some help from a uh, cornerback, I think that was, but does a great job. You can watch Crowder right here. The right tackle, who is number 60, I believe, who was out on a chip, it looks like, at first. He breaks away from this block very easily, just disengages, and, you know, has a, uh, a lot to do with that tackle, so... Great job of there, right there of you know breaking away from that block. We see some linebackers that are just swallowed up by some offensive lineman. I know this is Vanderbilt, probably not the best offensive lineman that the uh, college football has to offer, but at the same time, that's a pretty good job there of getting away from that, and he does get some help once again from his, uh, his cornerback. But at the end of the day, it's a great rep from Crowder, and I like what I saw right there. So Crowder does a good job here. I forget exactly what happened. It might have been a broken play. I have no idea, honestly. I mean, the snap was low. I'm trying to figure out what happened. I don't know, maybe he kept it, but Crowder does a great job here of, you know, making this go for a, a loss or just a, a, a no game, basically, so right here, the lateral quickness is actually very impressive, so you see him, he kind of pursues there with his right leg and then just has a really good jump cut to his left and just pursues him with great speed and tenacity, I know it's a quarterback, but still, that's a great stop by Crowder right there, you have to love what you saw, so we'll show it once again in real time. Really good lateral quickness. Have to be happy with that one. Makes a very solid tackle at the waist, so I, I like what I saw there once again. So Crowder was very, very close right here to making a fantastic play. He's in more of like a Mike Linebacker look here. So does a great job of going through the right gap, getting away from the guy trying to block him, but just missed a shoestring tackle that would have been a fantastic play. The play went for like 11 yards. So here's Crowder once again. I'll slow it down. Um, disengages from the block from number 72 right here. Does a good job of getting away from that. Um, you know, you see some guys get absorbed by blocks sometimes, but I think his block shedding is pretty decent. I mean, the offensive lineman did not square up that block whatsoever right here, so it was pretty easy for Crowder. Then gets into the gap. The running back was trying to go here. Then he sees Crowder and just bounces it back outside. And Crowder almost trips him up right here to make a great play. But then the uh, rest of the Georgia defense does not tackle too well. And it goes for like an 11-yard gain. So, you know, I would say that Tay Crowder was probably inches away from making this play go for no gain. Unfortunately, he was a bit short on this shoestring tackle attempt. But I think it's a great effort and great recognition to get into the right gap and almost made a play that blew up this entire run play. So here's the final play we'll go over. Unfortunately, it did not end too well, but here's Crowder right here, and he tries to break away from the block from the right uh, right guard, it looked like, and does a decent job at that, but unfortunately did not wrap up, and the play went for about five, six, seven extra yards. So Crowder was very close to making this play happen. You see him try and get away from this block. Does a good job of that and tries to meet the running back, but unfortunately just does not wrap up right there. So that was a negative for me. I think the tackling could be a bit better, but it's, it's not the worst in the world. I think sometimes he went a bit too high and then, you know, he could wrap up better in some instances. And that's probably a play where he should have made that tackle. So it wasn't perfect by any means, but there's a reason that, you know, he was a seventh round pick. So I think at the end of the day, though, there's a lot to like about Crowder. I do think he has a lot of tools to be a good player in the NFL. Uh, I do think he's like his. Uh, best case scenario would be like a Corey Littleton type player who I do think was also undrafted if I remember correctly so um, you know, it, it's possible I do think he has a lot of good things about him he has good speed and play recognition sometimes pretty good the lateral quickness is good so I do think he has a lot of good traits of a, a modern day linebacker I do think he'll have a chance to play next year I don't know if you know um, Ryan Conley will be healthy the whole year I'm sure Blake Martinez will be there most of the time but that second inside linebacker spot might be a question mark for the Giants so if he can get in there 
there and get some reps and look good, then uh, I would not be surprised by it. I do think the ceiling's pretty high for a guy like this, and uh, I was happy with this pick for sure. So he is a guy who, you know, as I said, transferred from running back to uh, linebacker in 2016. So he's relatively new at this position. So we'll see if he can make the most out of that. But I do think, as I said, he has the tools to be a good inside linebacker. So we'll see if that comes to fruition or not. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll talk to you next time.